He is risen. He is risen indeed. You know, I really needed this singing today. We have, we've been talking about resurrection all week. We've been losing members of our church. We had uh, Norma Miller's mother who passed. Uh, but what a great and uplifting morning we're having with this beautiful music. And now let's hear what God has for us. We gathered together this Easter Sunday to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. All around the world, Christians are coming together to remember the fact that when they got there, there was no stone in front of the tomb. The tomb was empty and Jesus was alive. It is good, though, on Easter for us to remember something that sometimes we overlook, sometimes uh, we forget. You see, when Jesus died, it was, the world thought, a big defeat, a terrible defeat. The Messiah had humiliatingly died on a cross. And everyone in the world thought that Jesus had lost. But what turned out on Easter when they got there and saw that the stone was rolled away to be perhaps the greatest comeback in history. And that's what we want to talk about today. Great comebacks. Now, if I move into the story Sports world, what would be the greatest comeback you ever witnessed? Um, Warriors 3 yeah. 1 lead. Warriors coming back. No, when they lost. I'm thinking, unfortunately, my wife is a big North Carolina fan. I'm thinking only back to the NCAA tournament just a few days ago. Kansas was behind by what was. 16 points at the end of the first half. The biggest comeback ever. Kansas came back and defeated North Carolina 72-69 in the NCAA tournament. But I've got to say, any sports-oriented comeback you've ever seen pales in comparison to what happened on that Easter Sunday. It pales. You know, we've all experienced comebacks yet. Times when some limitation was overcome, times when a boundary was broken, uh, victory in our life that snatched from the jaws of defeat. Just think back to that Easter morning again. When they were there on Thursday, the Pharisees thought that they had won because Jesus' life was extinguished. They were worried because he was a threat to their control of the world. The Roman government wanted Jesus dead because of the following he had gained that they saw as a threat to their power. Not to mention the evil one who had wanted to kill Jesus because it would ensure his own rule over the earth. The crucifixion was the confluence of all three of those powers into one place. And Jesus was nailed to a wooden cross and he was lifted up between two thieves, one on his right and one on his left, and he was bloody, naked, and shamed. And the book of John gives the final account of his life. And before we read about the resurrection. I want to read about that today. John 19, 28 and 34. Jesus knew that he had now finished his work. And in order to make the scriptures come true, he said, I am thirsty. A jar of cheap wine was there. Someone then soaked a sponge with the wine and held it up to Jesus' mouth on the stem of a hyssop plant. After Jesus drank the wine, he said, Everything is done. And he bowed his head and died. The next day would be both the Sabbath and the Passover. And it was a special day for the Jewish people. And they did not want the bodies to stay on the cross <coughs> during this day. So they asked Pilate to break the men's legs and take down their bodies. 
The soldiers first broke the legs of the other two men who were nailed there. But then they came to Jesus and they saw that he was already dead. And they did not break his legs. One of the soldiers stuck his spear into Jesus' side. And blood and water came out. The word of God for the people of God. You know, it's not very often that we read that on Easter Sunday, is it? The story of Jesus' final days reveals that all of the prophetic scriptures written about him had been fulfilled. And what for these three great powers of the world, the religious teachers, the Romans, and the evil one, when Jesus said, it is finished, there on the cross, they thought that they had won. And that's why this is the biggest comeback in history, because that was not the end. That is not the end of John's gospel, if you read it, where I just stopped reading. The beauty of Easter is that many of us today can relate to feelings of things in life being finished. Some of you listening to me now know the sting of experiencing a setback in life. Maybe the loss of a job, a, a discouragement that comes. Perhaps it's a heartbreaking diagnosis. Maybe it's the loss of a loved one as we have experienced this week. You could have lost a friendship. Uh, of the loss of a dream. All of those can be devastating and they can feel so fine. And if you know what it feels like to be broken, ashamed, and hopeless, and lost, then the story of Easter is not just Jesus' story. It's your story. Chapter 19 of the book of John continues. It continues for two more chapters. When Jesus says it is finished, what he really means is all of these wonderful prophecies about me are finished. Now it's time for the real story to begin. No matter how dark the present may seem to you, the hope of Easter is that nothing is ever over until Jesus says it's over. Jesus' setback was a great comeback, a great and holy comeback. After Jesus was crucified, the body was laid in the tomb. Three days after that, just as we heard in the children's sermon, the stone was already rolled away. Jesus was gone. Mary Magdalene, let's hear her story right now in John 21 to 17. Mary Magdalene stood crying outside the tomb. She was still weeping uh, when she stooped down and she saw two angels inside the tomb. They were dressed in white and were sitting where Jesus' body had been. One was at the head and the other was at the foot. And the angels asked Mary, why are you crying? And she answered, they've taken away my Lord's body I don't know where they have put it. As soon as Mary said this, she turned around and she saw Jesus standing there. But she didn't know who he was. Jesus asked her, why are you crying? What are you looking for? She thought he was the gardener. So she said, sir, if you've taken his body away, please tell me so I can go and get it. And then Jesus said to Mary, Rabboni. The Aramaic word Rabboni means teacher. Jesus told her, don't hold on to me. I've not yet gone to the Father, but tell my disciples I'm going to the one who is my Father and my God, as well as your Father and your God. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. Against all odds. The tomb is empty. Of course, Mary believes that somebody came and stole the body until she recognizes Jesus and calls him the rabbi. That is a comeback. That's a lot bigger than, uh, you know, Kansas and North Carolina. 
That, that is a comeback. The truth is that Jesus' death on the cross was not a setback like everyone in the world back then thought it was. Instead, it was the necessary work for Jesus to make a holy comeback. And when he did that, he defeated sin and death forever, once and for all. When Mary finally recognizes Jesus, she grabs him in excitement and she does not want to let him go. But Jesus goes on. Jesus tells her that his work is not finished yet. That there is more to be done. And she is to go and tell others what has happened. And she does. The greatest comeback in history was playing out right before her eyes. And the truth is that our hope is not found in the fact that Jesus died on the cross for us. I think we make a mistake when we say that. You know where our hope is found? It's found in the fact of Easter, that Jesus was raised from the dead. He is alive. He is well. And he is working in you and me and all of us right now now. We are forgiven. We too experience resurrection and live forever with God. We too experience today the love of God pouring out from one another and we see God in each other in this life and then we go to be with God in the next life just as Jesus no matter how large, no matter how small, no matter what devastating blow or setback life gives you, you're always going to have a holy comeback when you believe in Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Would you pray with me? Jesus, your life, death, and resurrection are proof of the greatest comeback in history. Today, I invite all of those here with us to say this. I invite you, Jesus, into my life to reverse all of my setbacks and to allow me to experience the victory that has been made possible through the empty tomb. Forgive me of my sin and fill me with hope on this Easter day that I, O oh God, might be a testament to your grace and to your love and to your mercy. Amen.